All right. Hey, welcome to Discovery Church. Let me look at this camera real quick. Everyone who's joining us in our online experience, our Discovery family online, everyone who's outside on this beautiful day in our outdoor experience, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Come on, make some noise if you're excited to be in God's house, to be here today. Come on. Man, we are in this series, Red Flags, which is a relationship series that uh, let me get into in just a moment. Before I do... Um, last year, you guys, was an amazing year here at Discovery Church, and every year we like to make uh, available to you not just your giving and like uh, your annual report of giving, uh, and that should have been emailed to you, but we like to show you the annual report of the church, and that's available now online if you go to our, and we'll show it to you right here, the annual report. Um, some of the, some of the uh, um, magazine pages there. If you go online, it's available though on our Give tab. This should have been sent to you in email. If you give to Discovery, if you didn't get this, fill out a connection card, let us know, contact us in any way on you know, our website or our bulletin, any of those contact forms, and we'd love to get you this information. But it's just a celebration of what God has done, like the thousands of people who gave their life to Christ, the 314 baptisms, what's happening, like kids and youth. And in our Dream Center, we reached over 23,000 people in our inner city, you guys. It's amazing stuff that's happening here. Also, there is a financial report at the very end of this that our board of trustees here at Discovery um, review all of our finances and submit this report to you guys every year. And that's available to you. I really believe like, like you know, the church that you're given to or any entity you're given to, that you sh there should be good stewardship, uh, accountability, and transparency. And this is a way for us to do that. And it shows you the breakdown of, of just all the resources that God has given to his church and and where it went to. And just to give you some insight on this, uh, like our board of trustees, what they like to do that what, is, is make sure that there is about one third of, of the budget is expensed in staffing, ministry operations, like what it takes to run the ministry, and then all of our buildings and facilities. And I know this is, might be inside information, but I do want you to know, like, you can trust the the church that you're giving to, you guys. So, so it's like a third, so that there's not like a lopsided, like, oh man, they're spending way too much. We're spending way too much on buildings or way too much on staffing, but there is an, a nice balanced representation of ministry happening. So there was 32% of the budget went to operating all of our ministries that we do here at Discovery. 30% went to staffing, and usually at churches, it's about 50 to 75% of the budget goes to staffing. The reason why we can keep that so low is because the 900 plus dream team members who serve here at Discovery Church, you guys, give it up for all these people serving, leading all over the body of Christ. Like, the, we, we got more resources to leverage for other things because many hands make the load light, you guys. And then with our building and our facilities, it was only 22% of that was expense, which is really cool. It means that we have room in our facilities to grow. I mean, you know, we, got, we, need some, we need some room in our facilities, don't you, okay? All right, so I'll tell you more about that as we go through this year and what the plans are to expand here at Discovery. But that's available to you. It's on the website. If you didn't get your own annual report, make sure you let us know, and we'll get that to you, okay? All right, we're in this series, Red Flags. Last week, I talked to you about the seven red flags in your in your friendships, like the, the people you're calling friends, they, they should be building you up, not pulling you down. So we talked about that last week. Go check that out. Let me revisit with you the definition of a red flag, our, our definition, working definition. It's like the, the warning signs. There's signals. There's just potential danger ahead. That's what a red flag is. On, on the racetrack, they'll put out a red flag if, it's, if the conditions on the race way is not, it's not good to drive on, so you got to stop. On the beach, they'll put out a red flag if, if there's uh, you know, unsafety in the water. If they put out two red flags on the beach, it means you can't swim. It doesn't mean you can never get back in that ocean. It just means like right now, there are some problems, there's some potentials, and we need to wait. We need to make sure that this passes or gets addressed before you continue swimming, okay? Um, and so every one of us know we've, we've had different red flags in our, in our own hearts, in our own relationships, and that's what we want to address. We want to stop overlooking the flags and address them in our life. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12 says it like this. I love this translation of this proverb. It says, the wise, someone say wise. 
So the wise, they do two things, you guys. Look what the wise do. How many of you want to be wise in here? You want to be wise in your relationships? Okay, this is what the wise do. The wise see danger ahead, and then they avoid it. Okay, that's the two things that wise people do. They see danger, they see the red flag, and they, they go a different direction. But the fools, someone say fool. Okay, but the fools, they keep going, and they get in trouble. Now, there's... Every one of us can tell stories of either side of this proverb where, man, I saw some signs and I avoided it. Man, I saw some danger and I avoided it. But I believe there's way more stories would be on this other side of this proverb that we would be more like the fools who, who saw it, sensed it, people told us about it, we had Holy Spirit nudges, like conviction and discernment, and yet we went ahead anyway to our own destruction, peril, or like the proverb says, trouble. And so what we want to do in this series is just kind of uh, look at the red flags in our relationships and stop overlooking them. It doesn't mean you can never swim in the ocean or have a relationship or have that friendship. It just means that something needs to be addressed before you move forward. Like you need to address the smoke. You don't need to find the fire. Address the smoke. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So parents, parents, you... (laughs) If you smell smoke, you don't need to find the vape. Address the smoke. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Okay. If there's some smoke and there's some flags, there's some warning signals, you need to address those. Today, we're going to talk about 21 red flags in dating. 21 red flags in dating. Now, even if you're not dating or if you're married today, I want you to pay attention because there's a lot of principles that are in here, relationship principles that can help you out for you to receive from but we're going to have fun today. Y'all okay if we have some fun in church today, all right? If we laugh a little bit. I need us to have fun because I, I want to punch you in the gut a few times. And it, it, it's received better if you're laughing, okay, and you're having a, a good time. But after we look at these red flags, here's what I want to do. I've been praying for you all week. I want to show you the four revelations that you need to break the toxic patterns in your relationships, okay? There are four things, four revelations you need from God to break some of these strongholds and these patterns that are on your life. Okay, statistically speaking, though, uh, most of us in here, most of us are going to get married at some time in our life. Unfortunately, statistically, many of those marriages won't work out. And of those that don't work out, many of the people would say, like, well, I saw it coming. There There were some warning signs along the way. The problem is, though, when you're dating... You want to be in love, and you want it to work, so you tend to overlook the things that are right underneath your nose, like your mind is telling you, whoa, whoa, pay attention here, but your heart is saying, love will make it work. (laughs) We're going to have some fun today, you guys. Uh, I was doing, in my research, I was looking at different, like, um, memes and, and, and like photos and stuff. So let me, let, me sh- let me show you a few of these that I found. How many of you, you got this friend trying to give you good dating advice? They're like, all you got to do is just go up to her and say hello. Works every time. Sure, blue eyes. Come on now. Okay. Or how about this one? How about this one? Um, she's like, I'm on the bus and this guy's so fine, but he has an iPhone 6. She thought the the iPhone 6 was the red flag until her friend was like, but you're on the bus. You remember that. Got the wrong red flag here, girl. Okay. Here's, how about this one? She's like, he blocked me on everything, so I applied to his job. See you in the morning. Whee, red flag, red flag. Okay, some of you guys can relate to this one. How about this? I told a girl to text me when she got home. She must be homeless. Whatever you got to do to protect your ego, it's all good, man. All right. <laughs> so, so when I ask young people or young adults or people looking to get married what they're looking for in the person, that, that potential person, whether they're dating and someone to marry, they'll come up with different things. Like, I want someone who has a deep spiritual commitment to God or someone who, who is a person who loves the Word of God or maybe someone with ambition. They'll say maybe fun or they, they got to have fun or like fun. Or they got to be funny, witty, a leader in their field, things like that, which are great things. It's a great list and all. But in all my years of ministry, I I have never met a couple who is thinking about and going down the road of divorce for the reason of he's just not funny enough. 
or he just doesn't read the Bible as much as I would like him to read the Bible, or he's just not a leader in his field. He's not a leader in his field. This isn't going to work. But I have, I have spoke to so many couples who are on that road to ending it who, who had a red flag that maybe doesn't represent some of the things that are on your list of what you're, of what you're looking for. Uh, let me give you, before we jump into these red flags, let me give you two disclaimers, two disclaimers today, okay? Write these down. Number one, if you're not ready for marriage, then you are not ready for dating. And I know that's not very popular, maybe culturally within the world we're living in, but that is a reality if you have faith and believe in the God of the Bible. Where, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So if you don't know the purpose of something, you will inevitably, inevitably abuse it. If you don't know the purpose of money, like what God's purpose of money is, then you're going to abuse money. If you don't know the purpose of sex, you don't know God's design and purpose for sex, you're going, you're going to abuse sex. I don't care if you're married or not. If you don't know the purpose of it, you're going to abuse it. If you don't know the purpose of dating, then you're going to abuse it. Dating is a way to form an intimate bond that will result in eventual possible marriage. Now, if you're a follower of Christ, our romantic intentions are not the end, but a means to an end. Marriage. Second disclaimer today before we jump into these. Don't give someone your heart if God doesn't have theirs. If God doesn't have their heart, then, then why would you trust your heart in their hands? Okay? And we're going to d- dive into that a lot more as we get into these red flags. 21 red flags in dating. Y'all ready for this? Okay? All right, here we go. Number one, they're not ready to settle down. <laughs> This is a red flag. Stop pursuing people without an intention to settle down. Commitment should be the end goal in mind, not a pursuit of fun. And if you know that you don't see a future with them, then you're ultimately going to end up in heartbreak or sin. So don't pursue unless you see potential in them. As a person you'd like to marry, that's a red flag. You're talking to someone, they're like, well, I'm just not, I'm not looking to settle down. Then you ain't looking for me. Come on, somebody. Number two, they want to keep your relationship a secret. Uh, or they're embarrassed to be around you in public. They don't want to go in public with you. You, you. you can't go to church together. You can't walk to the car together. Don't, po- don't tag me. Don't tag me. I just don't want people to know you. Red flag. I'm not saying he's still seeing his ex, but I'm saying red flag. <laughs> Chest. I've got people looking at me weird right now. I'm about- <laughs> I'm blowing some stuff up today. Come on. Number three, (laughs) when they treat you extra sweet, but others totally different. See, here's we have this tendency to focus so much on how they're making us feel that we're missing what they're doing to everybody else. Oh, but Jason, he's so nice to me. He's so good to, to me. Yeah, he pushed his mom down the stairs and punched his brother in the face. I mean, but but he's so nice to me. And I know he yells at the waitress every time she doesn't bring him in the refill of the Pepsi that he really wants and needs. And, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if he's, listen, he's, he's going to punch you in a few years if he's, asking, if he's acting like that. I'm telling you, okay? Watch how he treats everyone else. She might be sweet to you, but she's somebody else to everybody else. Red flag, okay? Number four, you don't have healthy conflict. You don't have healthy conflict. Watch how she acts playing a board game. Watch how he acts playing sports or watching sports. If he gets crazy and throws stuff and is punching walls and stuff, and eventually you're going to become the wall, sister. Now, if you're married to the person right now, I'm just, I'm not trying to break people up or anything, all right? Don't... Don't, but just don't overlook it. Uh, address it. I'm giving you guys some conversation pieces is what I'm... Ha- address it. Have a conversation before there's an incarceration. I'm going to rhyme this series, the snap out of this series. Come on, somebody. It's a red flag if, if you don't have healthy conflict. It's not that you won't fight, right? You're going to fight. Couples are going to fight. You're going to fight. It's not if you fight. It's how you fight. See, healthy couples fight fair. Unhealthy couples fight dirty. Healthy couples, they fight for resolution. Unhealthy couples fight for victory. Well, fight to win. 
I don't want to lose. You're, the, you're going to lose. Okay? Last week, Veronica and I got in this huge fight. It was bad, man. Eventually, she came crawling back to me, up to me on her hands and knees. And she came, she came crawling on her hands and knees. And she said, get off from under that bed and fight like a man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was a joke, okay? Some of y'all are freaking out on your pastor right now. Calm down. We fight fair. We do. We both have like a D in our, I, I'm an ID, she's a DI, a dominant personality, so we know when we need to tailor it off and come back at it. We fight fair, y'all. But I'm just saying, it's not that you don't fight, it's that you fight fair. Or, or that you're, if you're always fighting, that's a red flag. Or if you have the, the pattern, fight, break up, make up. Fight, break up, make up. Red flag, okay? If, you, if you're not having healthy conflict. Number five, they immediately tell you they love you. And they start talking about marriage. But Jason, it's so romantic. He's already calling me love and boo and honey. You only, you've been on one date. At least give it a few weeks before you start saying, I love you or something. They got, they're planning your wedding on Pinterest after the first date. Red flag. Number six. They cut off all their close friends just to be with you. And expect you to do the same. That's a red flag. That is not healthy for any relationship to be so fixated that you isolate yourself from all the healthy people, from your small group and your, your, your team and the, the friends that you have. That is not healthy for them to do, to be overly dependent and fixated or to expect you to do the same. I'm getting crazy stares. Number seven, they always blame others for their mistakes. Especially, especially in the, if, they, if they blame all their exes, if they call all their exes crazy, if every one of their relationships was because of crazy, oh, they're just so crazy. If you meet somebody and all, they spew vitriol about all their previous relationships, and, then, and they just every chance they get, they talk about how crazy they were, eventually you're going to be one of their crazy stories. <laughs> Number eight. They never listen to you or ask about your heart, your feelings, or your interests. Okay, that's a red flag. No, it's okay. He needs me. I'm there for him. No, it, it's, it's not going to be okay 20 years down the road when you're married. It's not. Number nine, they worship the narcissistic trinity. Me, myself, and I. All right, it's always about them. Everything, even all the problems and challenges you have, somehow it is twisted back to how it affects them. They mix up the worship songs even. It's all about me. <laughs> me at the center of it all. They, no, that's a red flag if it's constantly about themselves. Okay, number 10 is kind of the opposite of nine. Instead of putting themselves on a pedestal, they put you on a pedestal of perfection. And they idolize you. So they even tell you things like, you're just so perfect. I'll just, and you're, you're per, you are not perfect. You're not. you're not. You're not an angel. I'm not saying you're a demon or anything, but you're a dude. And dude's got problems, okay? You are not. And you ladies too, you are not an angel. Some of you want a guy to worship you. You do not want a man to worship you. You're not worthy of it. I'm getting like growled at, I feel like right now. I saw scowls looking at me. Wait up. I'm going to get some extra security after this one. Hold on. <laughs> Number 11, you can't be yourself around them. Not like, not like, uh, well, man, she don't let me cuss and stuff, man. She's, she don't want me to drink and pass out anymore. What's she trying? I'm not talking about that. You need some people in your life telling you to shape it up and sharpen up and stuff. I, I'm saying like, like, if they're like, I don't like the way you laugh. Your laugh is ugly. You got an ugly laugh. You need to change that laugh. I don't, I don't like the way you smile, you know. It's just it, you should probably change that about you. I don't like your taste in food. Why don't you like seafood like me? I don't like your hobbies, basketball and football. Football's such a, a sport of violence. You don't like, why don't you like this? Why don't you like reading books like me? You should read more books. <laughs> I'm touching some strings right now. I wish, you, I, wish you, I wish you just, you know, it, 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 you can't be yourself around them. That's a red flag, okay? Number 12, kind of connected to it. They want to control everything. After the first day, asking for your passwords. You know what I mean? Red flag. 
changing your wardrobe, okay? Over time, there needs to be accountability. Yeah, over time, maybe, you know, she can update your raggedy wardrobe. But after the first day, come on now. All right, you've been dating a week. They're trying to control everything. These are small things too, man. Like, like you know, just you know, the way you break. Why do you break like that? Why are you breaking like that? Why do you take this route? You should go, don't take that route. Don't, 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 don't turn right. Go straight. Oh, I'm touching it, aren't I? I'm touching something. We're going to have some, just fight fair later. Don't fight, don't fight ugly. Fight fair later. Number 13, those you love don't love the person you're dating. Okay, all right. So the people you trust most, they don't feel good about it, all right? So your mom is telling you like, honey, there's just something about this guy. Dad's going, I just didn't like, I don't, there's something there. I didn't like, I don't like this. Your brother is telling you the same. Sister is telling you, your dog who likes everybody doesn't like him, okay? <laughs> then there's gotta be at some point, there's a, a flag that happens. Proverbs 27 and nine says this, not in your notes, but it says the heartfelt counsel of a friend is as sweet as perfume and incense. Look, you got family and friends in your life that love you, that are, they want your, your best interest. They have that in mind. Be open to what they see because they're probably seeing something that you don't or maybe that you're overlooking. Maybe they're going, look, he's not honoring you the way, the way he, he should or she's too into herself or he's pushing you sexually. I can, I can tell. You know, she's way too controlling. Okay, you want, the problem is though you want them to be wrong. You want it to work out. You go, oh, you don't know him like I do. You don't know her like I do, but you're overlooking these flags. God put those people in your life for a reason, to protect you, to help you. Pay attention to the people that you love and how they feel about the person that you're dating. Number 14, they don't share your faith, your values, or your vision. This might be a little extreme, but check this out. I think if you meet someone and you're having a conversation, maybe it's that first experience of coffee or whatever, lunch, if they do not, within the first hour, talk about Jesus or their church, red flag. Because people will talk first about what they value most. So, so they'll probably talk about you know, their hobbies or cars or shoes or, or sports or, or their ex-girlfriends. That's a different red flag, but you know, get out of there. But it's, it's, they'll talk about, the, if you have to ask of their, about their spiritual beliefs, about their church, about what they think about Christianity or faith, if you've got to ask, man, that's a red flag. If they're not going to, then they're probably not a committed follower of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, don't be yoked together with unbelievers. But I love him. She's so hot. <laughs> Listen, God's not limiting you. He's loving you. He's protecting you. Some of you need to stop missionary dating. You're trying to win someone to Jesus through your dating relationship with them. If they're saying things like, let me give you some extra red flags, connect this. If they're saying things like, don't worry, we can just repent after, red flag. If they're saying things like, it's not really sex if all we do is, red flag. I'm not really into church, but I am spiritual. <laughs> Red flag. <laughs> if you have to lose your biblical convictions to get their atten attention, God is not blessing that relationship. Wait for a kingdom relationship. Wait for a kingdom relationship. Number 15. Red flag. If all their heroes are dark and twisted. I'm not talking about like Batman and Darth Vader and stuff like that, y'all. Okay, it's okay. That's what I'm talking about. If they're like, you know, uh, uh, Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, and Jeffrey Dahmer, they're like, I don't know what about them. Just I like this uh, studying and literally, <laughs> yeah, run, <laughs> run. <laughs> That's a red flag, okay? <laughs> Number 16, you're being abused or manipulated. Okay, if you're, even if it's verbal or emotional abuse, it, or you're being manipulated where they're turning things around and on your, your own perception and your own ideas and your own feelings and using those against you. That is a red flag. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Number 17, you can't trust them. It's a red flag if you can't trust them. We talked here recently about, about love and how to focus on love as kingdom citizens. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, he says, love always protects and love always trusts. 
Love always trusts. It doesn't mean you're, gonna, you're not going to have moments of insecurity. That's normal to have moments where you're like, do you really, can we, are we going to? I mean, that's kind of normal, but when you're consistently worried that you can't trust them, that's a red, red flag. Now, I'm going to unpack that just a little bit, though, because if you're like, I don't trust him, I can't trust him as far as I can throw him, but you got good reason because he's sliding up in the girl's DMs all the time? Or she's snapping X's? Or he keeps liking pics of bikinis and butts? Okay, you got reason to not trust. You got, that's a red flag. There's a reason that you are not trusting or, and I want to be careful, or you could be the problem. Maybe you're overly possessive or insecure. You could be looking for problems when they're not really actually there. Maybe the problem isn't they're not trustworthy. Maybe the problem is you're not trusting. And, and listen to me, either way, it's a red flag. Either way, if you cannot trust them and be vulnerable and trust them or they're not trusting, you are not ready for a relationship. I love you. See, I told you I need to punch you just a little bit, guys. Number 18. I just spell it out very clearly to you because you need to hear it. They're cheating on you. If they're cheating on you. Now, here's what the... Forgive me if, if you've already, if you're making this, it's a silly decision where someone's like, the solution to this is, I'll just marry him. That's what's going to stop this. That is, that is like married couples going, you know, the, pro, the solution here for our, all of our marriage problems and our dysfunction is we just need to have a kid. Yeah, all the married people laughed right now, right? Yeah. Okay, this, this is, if he's cheating, if she's cheating, red flag, move on. Number 19. <laughs> you or they are just coming out of a hurtful relationship. If you're just coming or they're just coming, listen, you need time to heal from the past before God opens the next door for you. The fa- you, don't want to know the- you want to know the fastest way to not heal from that relationship you're coming out of? Continue gossiping about them. You will not move on if their name is constantly on your mouth. Stop talking about them, okay? Um, stop stalking their social media profile. If you want to move on, stop it. Block it. Do whatever you got to do. Stop comparing yourself to other relationships that are healthy and are working. If you don't want to move on from this, here's, here's what you ultimately do. Just find another woman. Find another guy, and you won't move on, okay? You need some time to heal from past relationships. Some of you are just going from relationship to relationship to relationship, and you need some time to heal from that, okay? You're going from one relationship to the next. Some of you got a pattern in your life that you're going from one to, you don't have any time because you know why? Because you don't know how to be with just you and the Holy Spirit. You don't, you don't know how to just, how to have your heart be held in the hand of God and you held in His, and so what you do is you try to put your hand in, the, uh, in your heart in, in a partner. You don't know how to be a child of God yet, and that's dangerous. Okay, I love you guys. We're, we're almost there. Breathing. We okay? We okay? Number 20, they're secretive, and they hide things from you, like money, debt, things like that. You, you're dating for a while, and you start talking about loans and stuff, and if they're like, oh, no, I don't want to talk about that, red flag. Red flag. Okay, if you married into some of this stuff you didn't know you were getting into, um, the best thing you can do about now is just stop overlooking it. Address it. Start, you know, bring accounts together. Get, get some help. Let's get out of debt. Let's get some counseling. Let's, let's figure this out. Don't, I'm not saying if you're married today, you throw it out. There's a red flag. Cut. No, no, no. You work through it. Stop, stop, uh, stop overlooking it and address it. Work through it together. Number 21. The only attraction is looks, okay? That's it. I mean, being attracted to someone's looks is one thing, but being attracted to someone's way of thinking, being attracted to someone's healthy habits, being attracted to someone's relationship with God, being attracted to someone's attitude or their generosity or their, their, their inner peace, that's a whole different level of attraction. Some of you all need to widen the scope of, your, of what you're looking for. Some of you, some of you guys, you, you caught on that you were shallow, 
and what you were looking for? Because you're like, I want her to be, and all it was was shapes and sizes. So now, now you caught on to it. Now you're like, she needs to be athletic. She needs to like working out like I do. Shut up. We know you're still shallow. I'm just kidding. I love you. Okay. Psalm 119, 115. Don't use this verse on them, but I love this verse. It says, get out of my life, for I intend to obey the commands of God. Come on, so cut, 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 cut. I, yeah, I'm, I'm on this. Don't use it. That verse was for you. You ain't going out of here being like, get out of my life. I'm a, don't you do that, okay? But that verse, come on, some of you guys need to get some people, some red flags, dude, because we intend to stay on God's path for our life. Okay, I've been praying for you guys all week that some of you guys, you, you need to break these toxic patterns in your life. And I got four revelations for you, four revelations you need in order to break these toxic patterns of unhealthy relationships. Some of you, you're attracted to the wrong person. You keep gravitating to the wrong person. Your heart gets broken time and time again, and you're wondering why. You need, some, you, you need something broken off you today in Jesus' name. And I'm believing that as, as these get spoken and these revelations we study and we dig into the word, that you would not just hear them, but you catch them in your spirit. That something would shift inside of you. That the way of your, your thinking would change today in Jesus' name. How many of you ready for that? Come on. You ready? Four. Four shifts. Four revelations that are needed to break the toxic patterns in our relationship. Here it is. Number one, you need this. You got to catch this. You can't fix them. You can't fix them. And the reason why you try to fix it is because you can't face the reality of what's going to happen if it doesn't get fixed. You can't, you can't make the hard choices or come to terms with that reality. We fix people because we don't trust God to do the right thing. We try to fix people because we don't trust them to fix themselves. Look, unless you are his mother or she's your daughter, God did not cause you to raise them. Amen. Trying to mold someone into what you desire is stressful. And it's also short living. Man, they need to want that and desire that for themselves. And no amount of your complaining is going to speed up that process. Stop committing to personal projects. Stop committing to personal projects. For anyone who has this struggle, I know you love people so much and you care so much. That's why you're trying so hard to fix them and fix you guys and make it right. You even believe that you're doing the right thing probably. You're doing the loving thing. You're doing the Christian thing. But what's going to help you, I think, is having a good understanding of the difference between carrying, someone burden, carrying someone's burdens and carrying someone's load. Okay, There's a difference biblically between a burden and a load. Look at it with me in Galatians chapter 6. I'll explain it to you. Galatians chapter 6 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch out for yourselves, he says, or you may be tempted. Then he says this, Carry each other's burdens. And this way you're going to fulfill the law of Christ. When he says burdens here, he's actually the translation is an excess burden or a boulder. You should not be expected to carry, no one should be expected to carry a boulder. This is a crisis, a difficult situation that is going to crush you. God has called us to come to each other's aid, to not allow each other to be crushed by the boulders of life, but we're going to carry it with you, okay? That's what he's talking about here. And then he says this, though. If anyone thinks they are something, when they're not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Check this out. Look what he says. For each one should carry their own load. Wait, which one is it? Are we supposed to carry each other's burdens or carry our own load? The difference is in the words he's using. No, you're not supposed to carry the boulder, but you are supposed to carry the load. The Greek word for load here is, is cargo or daily responsibilities. It's the everyday thing. Here's what you're doing. Some of you are trying to carry somebody else's responsibilities. And you are not called by God to carry their responsibilities. Some of you parents need to receive this, okay? Because you're trying to come to the rescue for your kids. Some of you guys need to, even outside of your dating relationship, some of you need, to, you need to understand, you need to catch this. You can't fix them. Here's the second revelation you need to break the toxic pattern in your relationships is number two. You're not valuing yourself enough. 
You're just not, you're not valuing yourself. You don't truly love yourself. You don't have a high self-respect, which is different from self-esteem. I don't believe in self-esteem. The Bible says we should not esteem ourselves highly, but lowly. Self-esteem is not your problem. Some of you are like, like, uh, like even your self-image, like you're like, oh man, I just don't, I, I just don't look right, and I, and I got these problems, and these issues, and I wish I was like this, and I wish I had that or this. Your problem is not self-esteem. Your problem is self-respect. You don't have an esteem problem, okay? You have, you have self-respect issue. You don't, you don't see the beauty in God's creation and in his design, in your purpose, and in the intentionality of who you are. Self-respect is gonna make you strong enough to be willing to stand alone rather than be mistreated by someone else just to stay in that relationship. Psalm 139, the psalmist says, God, you've made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's womb, and I praise you because I am made. You made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful, and I know it. I know your design in my life. You see, the way you view yourself directly affects how you expect others to treat you. And some of you are taking crap from other people. Sorry about that. Sorry, kids are in the room, huh? You're taking, I'm getting excited in here, too excited. You're taking junk from other people because you see junk in yourself. And God didn't make junk. God didn't make a mistake. you got to start valuing yourself if you want other people to value you. Y'all catching this? Are you catching this? Okay, number three, you allow them to guilt trip you. You're allowing people to guilt trip you. I've seen people stay committed in a relationship just because they don't want to abandon that other person. You constantly taking them back, though, with the roller coaster of up and down emotional turmoil is enabling the behavior. If you truly want what's best for them and for them to change, you can't allow them to guilt you into staying in a season that God already told you to leave. And you know it. Some of you know God already told you to move on, and the only reason why you haven't is because you don't want to abandon them. And they're guilting you into staying in a place that God already told you to leave. Galatians 1 and 10 says it like this. I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. You cannot prioritize pleasing people and please God at the same time? Am I going to obey what God has told me, what God has showed me, or am I going to try to please this other person or make sure that this other person is happy? Some of you need to catch this revelation, man. You're allowing others to guilt you into staying in seasons that God has already given you the green light to leave. Number four, the last revelation we'll give you today. Number four, what you find normal actually isn't healthy. So your definition of normal, how you were raised, what was modeled for you, the way that conflict, the way that couples get to resolution, the way that disagreements are handled, the way that, the, all that stuff. For, for some of you, you, maybe you were raised in a home that had healthy habits and intact homes, but for many of us, it was dysfunctional homes and homes that were broken. And so some of you can't, not, you don't have the vision of a healthy relationship you, you, because you've never seen it. You, for some of you, listen, you've got to catch this revelation. Please listen to me. You don't even think it's possible. You, have, you say, it's no way, no way. That's just fake and phony to think that you could actually be like angry or have a disagreement and not yell and not like fight, to not fight. You know what I mean? That's a, and not yell at each other. I mean, come on, come on. Everybody's going to. And you saying that, you even believing that is just revealing of the toxicity that, that is living inside of you and was passed on to you. Your definition of normal, the normal relationship, normal marriage, normal conflict is not healthy. And you need to catch that revelation. No one can teach it to you you got to catch it, that God has something more for you than what was modeled for you. Stop making excuses for dating people that bring you back to the place that God freed you from. Ephesians chapter 4. He says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life 
to put off your old self. You know, the old pattern, the old habits, what was modeled for us in conflict and in communication and in, in, in trial and stress, how, we, how you handle stress and how you react to stress and difficulty and disagreement, all that, put it off. It's being corrupted by its deceitful desires and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, to put on a new self. God has a new power, new character, new heart, new mind, a, a new rhythm, a new way to handle a new normal. Can I say that? A new normal than what was modeled for you. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, that's not, I'm not saying it's perfect, but what God has for you is, is a different journey that's going away from where you came from, away from the pattern that was modeled for you, away from what it looked like and what you raised under, away from what used to be normal to a new normal that is actually righteous and holy. You need to catch that. That you find normal isn't healthy. That what God has for you is new power, a new identity, a new name, a new self, a brand new you. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.